Samsung has grown into a powerhouse in the tech industry, consistently pushing the boundaries of innovation. With a commitment to quality and a vision for the future, they've become a household name worldwide. Let's take a closer look at how Samsung is revolutionizing the way we live, work, and connect. Automation is important as we are all becoming very busy. So on the automation side, I look at this very importantly for our technicians, making them more efficient. How can I be more places for more customers faster? And it's through the automation and IoT technology, electronic listening to our units to help create solutions, sometimes even before they actually fail. That's our future. I believe that the future will show us that you can allow through IoT electronic communication, us to monitor and identify electrical voltages as they change, alerting us before a part fails so that I can actually call you up and tell you, hey, I would like to send a technician tomorrow before the unit starts to warm up. I wanna make sure your food stays cold. We believe that through this process, this home care, not only will it empower the customer to gain that support, but it will give them better understanding of their units. We can show them how they can monitor their energy bills. We can show them how they can seamlessly connect other devices through this home care process. We can show them the health of their products where they can literally check and say, ah, yes, reminder, I need maintenance. I need to clean this tomorrow to prolong my life. Our home care piece of this is the way we change the future by empowering our customers, our technicians, and our employees to give a better seamless experience. We call it Samsung Beyond Boundaries. You'll probably hear me say SBB as we acronym it out. This was born from change in life. We saw during the COVID period that people were exiting, exiting the cities, even exiting suburban life and looking for more space, moving into much ruler territories. Just because they chose to live in a place that's a little harder to get to, doesn't mean they don't deserve the same warranty that we sold with the customer in the city. So we thought long and hard about this. How could we possibly be in more places as the world spread out a little bit further? And we created Samsung Beyond Boundaries by thinking that leave no customer behind idea. How we did that was we made sure that if I could drive to your home in 15 minutes, that shouldn't be any different than I have to make four hour drive. So we created a program that was beneficial not only to our customers, but also our partners. We were able to build a win-win for everybody. We've seen other stories out of here that are just heartwarming, where we've seen neighbors run to other neighbors to spread the word of SBB because, hey, if you buy this product, you can be taken care of. Yes, that's great for Samsung, but really what that is great is for Nick's heart, knowing that every person is feeling cared for. That's what SBB is about. It's about going to the customer no matter where you're at and giving them the same experience as if you were inside the Metro City. So we developed the idea by listening to them and understanding that we had to come to them. We had to find a way to make their service capability seamless, less life interrupting. So developing this concept of where we could actually travel around, go meet you in a location of your choice or even your office, but also then spread the word and allow multiple people to come to that same location to be taken care of. You know, walk-in service is great because it's when you want to do it on your time, but not everybody has that time. Yeah, so the Samsung Technical Training Center was designed to accommodate the training and building up of technicians. So we have technicians coming in and out weekly, whether they're here for a specified training or a certification, we regularly have techs coming in and out. The thing I'm most proud of when working for Samsung Care is the ability to develop technicians that ultimately help other people. Being a technician in the past, I was able to help people directly. Now I can help other technicians help other people. As we release curriculums, we try to include every aspect, including the technology side. So technicians, when they go into a home and they have an appliance that's technologically advanced, they are already pre-prepared to work on that appliance. They know it well, they know how to operate it, they, they know the technology inside and out. So something that I would say to the younger generation that may be looking into going into this field is that we do use a lot of technology. We train our technicians to be able to work on these appliances that are technologically advanced 
We give them technology as a tool. Our technicians are all equipped with an app that allows them to remotely connect to an appliance and troubleshoot it in the palm of their hands. They're able to use technology to diagnose technology is, is what I'm trying to say. Satisfaction is of course a proxy for customers experience quality with the goods and services that they experience. And it really is the primary driver of customer loyalty. So in that sense, what we're seeing with high satisfaction um, is stronger loyalty among consumers. I think quality is increasing from a customer point of view and we're seeing that in the stronger satisfaction customers are reporting. We certainly live in a tech driven economy now to be sure. Uh, as such, the availability and usability of apps is central to many businesses and consumers have come to expect these. They are part of the table stakes, if you will, of companies that want to enter into new markets or succeed in existing markets. Consumers want these tools to be easy to use and customizable to their particular needs. And that's really critical. And we found that for a long time in the measurement of ACSI, that consumers want what they want. They want their particular needs to be met. Certainly tools like apps and related uh, tech features that companies are rolling out can impact purchase decisions, but I think even more importantly, they're really critical drivers of customer loyalty or repurchase decisions. Obviously, customer satisfaction is critical to purchase and repurchase decisions. What we do as customers is generally go back to things that we like that were pleasurable. And so satisfaction is key. However, other considerations can and often do inform consumer decisions and can result in customers defecting even when they're relatively satisfied. To give a couple of examples, shifting economic circumstances can lead customers to leave when they're happy with what companies are offering or even when they're happy. I think more importantly, as a warning to companies, the introduction of new, innovative, and particularly attractive alternatives is another cause of customer disloyalty among otherwise satisfied customers. So you've got to not only satisfy your customers, but make sure that you're satisfying them relative to what else is out there in the world or what is coming out. Now, this is a really difficult needle for companies to thread. We as consumers want our technology to work quickly and easily. For many companies or many technologies, that would mean that technology knowing as much about us as possible. But in the end, you know, at least according to the voice of consumers, we're not really willing to sacrifice our data privacy to realize this convenience. We still want the convenience, we're just not willing to, to sacrifice our privacy to get it. Um, and so this is always going to be a difficult task for companies and, and something of a moving target. As technology advances, new data privacy concerns like those emerging from generative AI and how AI is learning, which is from the information all of us are putting as user-generated content up online, it, it's really going to force companies to constantly rethink their strategies for, for threading that. Needle. In some sense, that question is answered by how well they have done at responding to those failures. Every company has failures. It's how well do you do as a company in responding to those failures and winning back the trust and loyalty of your customers when something does go wrong and innovation. I mean, these companies are all known for constant innovation for bringing new goods and services to the table that consumers really want. And so, yeah, I had a bad experience last time I used Amazon, for example, but they've got so much and they're bringing more to the table every day and every week and every year, I'm going to keep going back and I'm going to forget that bad experience, at least if they treat me moderately well in trying to resolve the problem. I think some evidence that the younger generations may be less loyal than their predecessors. I think it is important to note, however, that younger consumers tend to be less loyal than older consumers in general. And we've seen this phenomenon in our data at ACSI for decades. When you think of younger consumers, you generally think of lower salaries, income instability, and the kinds of things that force consumers to look for the best deal, for instance, and not necessarily the product that they like the most that may be at a higher price point uh, and their favorite. I think for now, it's, it's important to say that that's still an open question as the millennials and Gen Z's age We'll have to keep a close eye on them to see if they're actually less loyal, brand loyal than generations that came before them, or that was simply an artifact of them being younger, less stable consumers. Like many people, I'm, I'm most interested to see what advances in AI are going to do in terms of customer company relationships. Um, what we've seen over the last really just four or five years in terms of the rapid and, and almost shocking growth in the capabilities of AI promises so much in terms of how we as business people are going to be interacting with customers and what customers expect of us. AI has opened the possibility to a universe where companies can much more efficiently interact with customers in 
all sorts of different ways, answer their questions, provide them the services that they're looking for, solve problems when there are problems with products or services relatively quickly. It's really going to be interesting to see how creative companies can be in integrating that into the products and services that they're offering to customers. The American Customer Satisfaction Index was founded more than 30 years ago now at the University of Michigan and designed to be the first ever cross or across the entire economy measure of quality and satisfaction with the goods and services that consumers experience. Over the last 30 years, we've expanded tremendously in terms of adding more companies for measurement and more industries for measurement. But the core idea is, is to know the health of the economy in some ways, is to know how happy consumers are with the goods and services that they're experiencing. And that's the core mission of the project, to measure those experiences, to measure satisfaction at a company level, but also at an industry and an economy-wide level that allows us to understand where the economy may be going in the future based on that satisfaction. I was an example of why SBB was built, but it wasn't built for me, but I'm an example. I was living in New York City at the time of COVID. As COVID was hitting, we were looking for an escape like many other people in America. And I chose to move out into the rural area, as did a large part of our population. When I thought about these people, how are they going to get their appliances and phones and televisions fixed being so far away? I reminded myself of the no leaf person behind attitude. We are selling goods in America, we should be able to service in America. And that is very important to me at Samsung. So we created Samsung Beyond Boundaries because it's outside of our normal rules. We try to run about a service call every hour for efficiency. This program is not that. We might drive three to four hours in the mountains, take a ferry. I've even had one fly a plane over to Catalina Island because that same customer that was there deserved it just as much as I did when my, in my apartment in New York City. Samsung Beyond Boundaries is connecting people and the way they want to live with our products. It's given us the opportunity to show customers that are in extreme rule the extra benefits of our products through communication, through technology, through connectivity, showing them that it doesn't matter where you live in the United States anymore. Not only can you live there, can you thrive there, but Samsung products will be taken care of for you there. That's super important to me. Samsung Beyond Boundaries, I am extremely proud of like many of our products. When I say products, I mean services. And the reason I say that is I'm proud of them is because we always think of the customer first. We are eccentric in this fashion. We listen actively and ask them their pain points, and then we try to remove those. Samsung Boundaries was just one of those examples of many activities we do to make sure that every customer has the same opportunity. What we hope the best customer experience is, is from start to finish. So from what the time the customer purchases our product, maybe they have a problem where they need to have a technician out. We want that experience to carry over to our technician coming out there and giving them the best experience possible. By the time our technician leaves, we want that customer just as confident in their product, if not more confident than when they first bought it. We know that the customer experience can make or break their relationship with a brand. We wanna make sure that our technicians, when they leave these doors, they're prepared to maintain that relationship that our customers already have with our appliances. To learn more about Samsung's range of products and innovations, visit samsung.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and podcast for more inspiring stories from brands that are making a difference. Until next time, keep trending.